Welcome back to The Melodic Marketer. I'm your host, the great and powerful and strikingly handsome Dr. Omeb. This is where we talk about the business behind the music. Today, we're looking into the NAMM show, particularly the trend of prestigious brands like Gibson and Fender stepping away from this once coveted industry event. We'll examine the reasons behind this shift, its implications for the NAM show, and what it signals about the future of music merchandising. The National Association of Music Merchants, NAM, has a rich history dating back to 1901. Originally formed as the National Association of Piano Dealers of America, its purpose was to unite various music products to strengthen their global influence. NAM's earliest focus was on pianos and organ manufacturers, reflecting the musical preferences of that era. Historically, the NAMM show has been the epicenter of musical innovation and business. It's where industry professionals have come together to discover the latest trends, products, and technologies. The event's significance in shaping the music industry's landscape can't be overstated, as it's been a launch pad for many revolutionary products and brands. However, the NAM show's character and its role within the music industry have evolved over time. Once an exclusive event for industry insiders, its nature and accessibility have changed, leading to current discussions about its relevance and future. This evolution mirrors broader changes in the music industry, especially concerning how manufacturers connect with their consumers and the role of digital platforms in marketing and sales. The Beatles' iconic appearance on The Ed Sullivan Show in 1964 marked a transformative moment for the NAMM show and the broader music merchant industry. This event sparked a significant surge in guitar popularity is witnessed by the exponential increase in demand for both electric and acoustic guitars in the United States. Both retailers and manufacturers experienced a boom, with music stores seeing heightened sales and manufacturers ramping up production. This Beatles-driven phenomenon expanded the music industry, introducing a diverse range of musical instruments to the mainstream market. The Beatles' influence on American culture significantly boosted attendance at the NAMM show, attracting retailers and distributors wanting to capitalize on the new wave of interest in music and instruments. The British invasion prompted many manufacturers to focus more on the design, technology, and marketing of musical instruments targeting the younger generation who were now becoming its key consumers. This shift was evident in the evolving nature of the NAMM show, which began to showcase more innovative and youth-oriented products aligning with the new musical revolution. The Beatles' legacy on the Ed Sullivan stage was the catalyst for a period of significant growth and transformation and the music merchant industry, influencing trends and business strategies for years to come. In recent years, a significant shift has occurred at the NAMM show, with major brands like Gibson, Fender, and PRS and others choosing not to participate. This change is noteworthy because these brands historically used NAMM as a key platform to showcase new products and innovations. Gibson, for example, has a massive following on social media particularly on Facebook, with 7.4 million followers, far surpassing NAMM's own social media reach of only about 320,000 followers on Facebook. This disparity in online presence is reflective of a broader trend where major brands are increasingly relying on their digital platforms to connect with their audience. The decision to forego NAM participation suggests these companies are finding more value in direct engagement with consumers through social media and other digital channels. This shift has significant implications for the traditional role of trade shows in the music industry. The move away from NAM by big names has led to a reevaluation of the show's value proposition for vendors and attendees. While NAM has been a staple event for networking and product launches, the growing online presence of these brands means they can now achieve similar objectives without the physical constraints or significant costs of a trade show. Direct-to-consumer interactions facilitated by digital platforms offer a more targeted and potentially more effective approach to marketing and sales. This trend raises questions about the future of trade shows like NAM. As major brands build more direct relationships with consumers, 
the need for a traditional trade show platform may diminish. This shift could lead to a reimagining of NAM's role in the industry or possibly a downsizing of the event, focusing on more niche markets or emerging brands rather than the industry giants. This evolving landscape of the music industry, influenced by digitalization and changing consumer behavior, is reshaping the relevance of traditional industry events like NAM. NAM, once known for its exclusivity, has seen a shift in its attendee demographics over the years. Historically, gaining access to the NAM show was a coveted privilege reserved for industry insiders, retailers, and professionals. This exclusivity added a certain allure to the event, making it a highly anticipated gathering within the music industry. The show served as a crucial meeting point for business dealings, networking, and the unveiling of the latest and greatest musical innovations. However, in recent years, NAM has opened its doors wider, selling passes to the general public and even seeing brands give away passes. This has altered the event's atmosphere, transitioning it from an industry-centric convention to a more public and inclusive affair. The introduction of public attendance has brought a new dynamic to the show, with a mix of professionals and music enthusiasts attending. This transformation has led to a change change in the nature of the event itself. NAM now bears a resemblance to fan conventions like Comic-Con, with autograph and selfie chasers and smoke blowers giving their elevator pitch to brands for endorsements. While this shift has broadened the event's appeal, it has also diluted the focus as a trade and industry-centric show, leading to mixed responses from longtime attendees and professionals in the industry. The evolution of NAM from an exclusive trade show to a more publicly accessible event reflects broader changes in the music industry and consumer culture. The shift towards a more inclusive model raises questions about the future of NAM's identity and its role within the industry, especially as the lines between professional trade events and public entertainment gatherings continue to blur. The future of the NAM show is at a crossroads, as companies like Gibson, Fender, Martin, Taylor, and others continue to grow their direct-to-consumer channels and digital presence, the traditional role of NAM as a primary platform for product launches and industry networking is starting to be questioned. This shift suggests a possible decrease in the relevance of large-scale trade shows in favor of more targeted brand-specific experiences. Brands are increasingly creating their own experiences around their products and identities. This move towards personalized brand-centric events and digital interactions could lead to a rise and smaller, more focused gatherings, possibly even branded stores in major cities like the Gibson Garage in Nashville. These spaces would offer an immersive experience and direct consumer engagement that modern consumers are seeking, aligning with the trend towards experiential retail. The changing landscape of brand interaction and consumer behavior might see NAM evolving to cater to a different audience or serve a new purpose. The show could transform into a platform focused more on emerging brands, innovative startups, or specific segments of the music industry. This shift would redefine NAM's role, moving it away from the large-scale industry-wide showcase it has been in the past. The potential decline in participation by major brands at NAM is symptomatic of a broader trend in consumer engagement and marketing. As digital platforms continue to offer effective and cheap ways to reach and interact with consumers, the necessity of traditional trade shows diminishes. This does not spell the end for NAM, but signals a need for adaptation and reimagining of its role in a rapidly evolving industry where direct-to-consumer experiences are becoming the norm. Have you felt the impact of these changes if you're in the industry? Maybe you've noticed a difference with how brands like Gibson and Fender are engaging with their audience. Share your insights and experiences in the comments below. And if you found this insightful, please hit the like button, subscribe, and ring the notification bell for more deep dives with The Melodic Marketer. I'm Dr. Omeb, and I'm signing off until our next journey through the rockin' world of music business. Thanks for tuning in.